Hey, welcome to another episode of Quest to Be the Best with professional golfer Tess Hackworthy. My name is Kyle Lurk of Mental Golf Type, and in this episode, we are going into some mindset training, and you're going to see behind the scenes of how we're toughening T up mentally, how we're building our confidence, building our self image, because these are some pillars of real greatness and competing on the level that she's trying to compete at and really get to the top of the tours, this is an area she's got to get super strong at. So we're going to do some pretty cool things. You're going to see behind the scenes of that in this episode. If you haven't yet, please make sure to subscribe so you're always alerted when the newest episodes drop. Just make sure you click that button and that notification bell. And that's all coming up. A little mindset training, mental toughness coming up right now. Oh, love it. Okay, tell it. Uh, yeah, so so basically, like, pretend that you met, like, a real live fortune teller. Okay. Like, you know, kind of that creepy, like, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, like, she's wearing all that voodoo shit. It's probably big. No. No? Like, it's an old Tom Hanks movie. But anyway, so it's like okay. this, like, kind of thing that just popped up, and it was like this weird wizard type person, but whatever. Anyway, so there's a real live fortune teller. And... They told you that moving into your next tournament, I mean, they give you everything down to, like, the detail, what the weather's going to be like, everything that like, people are going to run into going to the first tee, and they tell you every single shot that's going to happen and that you play, your, like, five shots better than you've ever played in your life. Like, you're going to just career. And they just Love it. literally getting you to think about every single shot that you're going to hit, like, laying it out for you. So they predicted this for you, and you go in there, and the weather's the exact same. Everything that they, this person said is coming true. So, like, when you walk into that first tee, like, how are you actually feeling? Like, like pumped up, because I know it's going to happen. Good, right? Yeah. But again, though, this is kind of what's happening when you do what you're doing. Like, you're defining it so well, you know exactly what's going to happen. And if something doesn't go the exact way you want to, you know what to do because you have the solution. All right, yeah. Gonna, I know what I need to be better on the next one. Again, I'm going to embrace that. Like, it's going to be better because it averages out. It's part of the game. Yeah. The law of averages is something that, you know, I kind of made up, but essentially it's it's a concept that I really believe in. And, and I believe the fact that things will average out if you let them. And this is a concept that we've worked on with T for a while. And it's a strategy in how to kind of keep yourself from going off the rails while you're out there is understanding that things will average out if you let them meaning like if you have a stupid bogey or you know depending on your level maybe double bogey whatever and you understand that if you made some mistakes and you keep plugging away that something probably really good can happen to come average that out like if you're somebody who just kind of says shoot even par and you start bogey, 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 there's a good chance you might go birdie, birdie, birdie when you have no business doing that in a normal circumstance. So that's kind of what the law of averages is. The so law of averages is freaking been my jam. I said that out loud to someone at practice the other day and they told me I was crazy, but it worked. <laughs> See, things always even out for me. <laughs> you know, it's a way of thinking that just not a lot of people do, but it's a really good strategy in how to keep yourself kind of calm and know that some good things are coming. One of the coolest statements I've ever heard is that in any sport, like great players always believe they can catch fire. So it's just a matter of time. And, you know, knowing if you kind of stay to what you're doing, stay to your training, and it's going to be a roller coaster. Like we have to understand things don't really go like this, right? They go like that. And that's been this whole concept with T and what we're training around. Right? Yeah. Because now, again, it's total change. It's like, oh, no, I messed this up. Now things can get worse. It's like, oh, man, like this next one's probably going to be amazing. <laughs> you know? I, I freaking love that thought because prior to this, I did not think that way at all. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about what we've been talking about and um, how I've kind of shifted my mindset and whatnot. And I think the biggest thing for me is um, like the way that I talk to people, the way that I think about myself. And then the other is like the way that I'm approaching my day-to-day -day activities um, on and off the course. Like 
with these goals and these quotes that I've been um, reading every day and night, like it's a mindset that I've not only been taking to practice every day, like, all right, what am I here to accomplish? Like, let's get it done. Um, but even like when I go to my workouts and stuff, like thinking about what I'm trying to get to and what I'm trying to accomplish. I mean, mindset, it leads into every single thing you do, how you talk, uh, how you work out, how you practice. Like that's something we gotta be monstrously aware of and I'm making sure she knows every second of the day it's gonna be just hyping up, it's gonna be self-talk. I mean, this, it takes constant attention and this is stuff that not a lot of people are willing to actually do, but if she's gonna get to that top level, she's gotta do it better than anybody's even close to being willing to do. I don't think there are many people in my program that understand a lot of the things that we're talking about and the positives to what we've been talking about. I mean, this is the first time that I've been hearing half of this stuff anyways. Like I didn't know any of this till a few months ago, you know? So well, like, um, nobody I think that's why I'm crazy to them. <laughs> like I'm serious. And I don't say that just as like, like, Oh, I know everything, but like nobody knows this shit. You know, it was like my career where like, I see everybody going in terms of all the stuff on like social media and all the technique stuff. And I mean, it's like, to me, it's like, you have such an advantage because of what everybody's being conditioned to think. Like, you can't tell me that a good swing is going to separate two different players. Right. Like an example we were talking about, like, there's nothing that separates most anybody in the country from you when it comes to what shots you can hit, how far you can hit it, stuff like that. Yeah, maybe some can hit a little further. Maybe they got a shot around the green that's a little different. That's not going to separate you. Yeah. And it's the belief and the confidence that you can do it in any situation. That's the separator because then again, now we're controlling everything going on in our body. <clears throat> body reacts better. Brain waves are act like acting a lot more efficiently. I mean, it all boils down to self image. Five percent of all people do ninety-five percent of all women. Why is that? What's that? Because there's and you know, why is that? Elite few that think they can win, and that know they're they're showing up every time to win. So again, yeah. I look at like just kind of my world, like basketball and stuff. So like LeBron James or Kobe Bryant were in the NBA Finals for like ten straight years, either one or both of them. <laughs> yeah. Michael Jordan was in the NBA Finals all the time. Like, it doesn't matter what team LeBron James goes to, he ends up in the NBA Finals. <laughs> like, that is a pretty elite mindset you know what i mean yeah like, that's what he's like i'm gonna get the right people around me i'm gonna do what i need to do he's like i win and this is how i win like again there's people that are just as athletic as him that can't hold a candle to you know what i mean tom brady right. is the most athletic dude in the world but he yeah. knows and he believes he's gonna win every time he steps on the field i mean there's there's quarterbacks and people in the game that are far more elite than him i mean he was he wasn't even barely drafted. He was like in the sixth round. <laughs> you know, it's like, so again, though, there's just a, a few select people. My point about this, though, is the amount of people that actually think like this is very few, especially in golf, because it's just yeah. not talked about. And then the amount of people that actually embrace it and put value in it and think that, know that nurturing that kind of confidence and belief in yourself is the game changer. Like, those are the ones that win. Self-image is more about, like, deep down, what do you truly believe? I truly believe that I work so dang hard on the course, off the course, every day. And so, honestly, like, for me to tell myself, there's no one out there right now that is doing this all the time. They're writing down their thoughts. They're journaling about their practice. They're talking into their phones, you know, telling and telling myself, what did I feel that day? You know, what were the good? What were the bad? You know, keeping track of my PRs, like who else is doing this right now? And and that's the reason why no one can beat me. Her confidence change has been super cool. And seeing some of the text messages and things that come in and, and how she's talking differently and you know how much more confident as a person she feels i mean to me that that's deeper and goes way beyond golf and that's the stuff that i i love to help with is essentially that overall self-image because that's what's going to transfer to playing at that high level you got to be really rock solid with yourself 
and knowing how you're wired and how you work. Um, so seeing that body language and everything is, is super cool. Always fold your hat on it. There's not a lot of people willing to do what you're doing, number one. And like you're putting yourself so far above and beyond what everybody else is doing that you're gonna have this sense of like, you know, like they can't even touch me because of what I do and I'm willing to do. Yeah, I'm up in the gym at 7 a.m. I'm doing these just freaking crazy hard stuff in practice, you know, while everybody else is sleeping in and doing that. I mean, like when you can actually put yourself there and be like, I deserve to be better because I work harder. Mm -hmm. you know, you that as an affirmation, as a belief, like that's where a strong self-image comes from. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What Kyle has really taught me to do is it's so important to do these things all the time so that you truly have a reason to believe that you are the best and you have the potential to be at the top. And so X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, these are all the reasons why I will get there. I mean, my game has gone to some crazy levels that I didn't think. And I'm so excited to see where it goes in the next couple of years because, you know, the improvements that I saw this year were off the chart. I will be the best. And that's what I believe. All right. This has been an awesome journey with Tess so far. Uh, and this is just the beginning we're hearing from her. But, you know, through the course of this, she had uh, three top 15s on the WAPT. Uh, playing super consistent out there. She's dropped almost two shots off her scoring average, which is huge to do at that level. To go from like 74 to 72 is pretty awesome. And, um, you know, she made her first cut in a symmetric tour event. She had to play a few. And, you know, this year is just going to keep growing as we're seeing her uh, transpire. So we will be back with another season with Tess as she gets to start playing more as we get to get together in person a little more so we will definitely see a lot more of her but until then i want to thank you so much for following quest to be the best again make sure to follow Tess on social media follow her journey um we're going to see some great things from her along the way so again thanks for watching we're going to have a new season of quest to be the best coming up very very soon here so stay tuned i tried to think about me driving my car the other day while i was driving and it was a shit show <laughs> but i just did it because you and i have talked about that I told you that's and dangerous, man. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the best. And that's what I believe.